Hey everyone. Hi. It's us. Yes, us. <laughs> and uh, I, I went to this place today. I did not. <laughs> yes, uh, I went to this place for the first time since lockdown and I bought this shirt today because uh, Universal never has retro stuff. So the fact that they have retro stuff, like the fact that they suddenly realized, oh, people get nostalgia for the stuff we used to close. Shocker. We thought we closed it because nobody likes it anymore, but no, we just closed it because we forgot that people do like it. So, you know, I have this shirt with all the rides they closed, plus like Ar Earthquake and Jaws are still part of the tour. And, you know, I guess you can still meet Frankenstein's monster. Uh, didn't today. The only characters I saw out and about today were Scooby-Doo climbing out, like poking out of the mystery machine. That's awesome. And uh, Hello Kitty waving from behind the banner. My one true love. My many one true loves. <laughs> Where, where do I rank on the one true love? My number one one true love. Okay. <laughs> Too many uses of the word one in that concept. <laughs> okay, she's my best friend. How's that? Sure. Look, if you want to be in an open marriage <laughs> just so you can be with Hello Kitty, that's fine. I just need to know these things. <laughs> like, we'll talk it over now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the reason we're here tonight, like I said, uh, I haven't been to Universal since before lockdown because we did not do the Taste of Universal Food Festival. Yeah, it didn't seem really appealing it at did, the time. We did a handful of the Knott's Food Festivals because Knott's mm. Food Festivals are always a good time and also we live a lot closer to Knott's. It's also a cheaper ticket than most of these things. And it's a cheaper ticket. The Universal Food Festivals, I was considering it, but then like by the time I made up my mind, they already announced, oh, and we're gonna reopen and your pass will still work there. And I was like, well, I'll just wait for that. Cause, hey. Hey. cause universal food is not a big draw for me the way it is at Knott's. No. Like there's very little like must have food that doesn't involve sending royalties to a turf. So yeah. there's okay food at Universal, yeah, but not like Yeah, but even like that food, food is like sub TGI Fridays. Now granted, they do seem to have been moving up in the food department lately. Like the new, I still haven't eaten at the new, uh, the newly revamped Jurassic Cafe, mm -hmm. but the new menu is much more interesting than mm -hmm. the old menu was. Um, but apparently one of the ways they've stepped up, uh, Charlie and Haley told us that when we go back to Universal, we have to have the giant Bavarian pretzel, which comes here in this pizza delivery box. This monstrosity. <laughs> so this is at the um, the cart that used to be the Cinnabon cart outside where Walking Dead used to be. Yeah. <laughs> and it's now just like a, a... Rest in peace, dead people. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And, and now it's just a uh, Universal treats cart, I guess. It's not It's not even really a cart, it's just like a booth. It's just like, it treats, it's what's for dinner. But yeah, it used to be Cinnabon, it is not Cinnabon anymore. So now they've added, uh, I have not opened this yet. So I have not seen yeah. the inside. Ooh, Look at holy this. Holy shit. <gasps> um, they offered me a dipping sauce, but I knew it was gonna be enough of a hassle just bringing the pretzel home. <laughs> this seems obscene. <laughs> We probably won't get through this night. And also, yeah, we live an hour plus away from Universal. So despite the fact that I kept it in one of my delivery driving bags, I fully expect this to not be the freshness. No, of course. But uh, let us start to chip away <laughs> at this. <laughs> this is the steering wheel that comes off in your hand from that I think you should leave sketch. <laughs> What just happened is the second I made that reference, the phone just the phone just popped right out of the holder on the, on the mount. So uh, so uh, I guess that focus group needs uh, needs a little more need, needs to focus on phone mounts on ring light stands. Well, there you go. Let's make a wish. <laughs> I can't tell which of these is bigger. Yeah. I think you have more pretzel because you got more of the middle. Mm -hmm. I think this is a good size chunk. Shall we lay in the truck? I, I was just about to ask. This is the grossest thing we've ever done on camera. 
at least that my audience has seen. <laughs> yeah, it's a solid pretzel. Mm -hmm. And it probably would have been even better, you know, when it was yeah, fresh and even, hot. Even kind of stale. This honestly, this honestly hits the shit. Yeah, I don't know if it's stale at all because it's still. I mean, not stale, but like yeah. like cold, cooler. But yeah, I was feeling like when I was carrying it back to the car, I was feeling. You know how like the inside of a raisin canes bag gets really mm. steamed up. Mm -hmm. Like I was feeling that kind of warmth emanating and from the, the box. The sweat that's sort of all over the box, you know. Yeah, it's it's again like the sweat that happens in your raisin cane napkins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a solid pretzel. Mm, yeah. I don't know if this is just coincidence or if they were specifically trying to think of. So how do we compete with the big, or or how do we provide alternatives? To like the big theme park snacks because like the the long churros and the turkey legs are designed to be big filling snacks that you can walk around with mm -hmm. but now in the year of our lord 2021 you're not walking around with food you are sitting seated mm -hmm. at a place so i wonder if the idea was let's create something comparable but that is not as mm -hmm. designed for walking around or if they were just planning on doing this anyway so my platonic ideal of this kind of pretzel is served at the pretzel cart in front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Mm. They are soft and squishy and juicy, and I love them to death and I miss them. But this is like very comparable to that kind of like soft hitting all the, the notes of like a good old New York style, like Bavarian pretzel. Well, this is served next to the cartoony New York leading up to the Secret Life of Pets ride, mm. so. And they really got their demo hit real nice and sweet right mm -hmm. there. And a block away from the New York where you know, they used to have people yell at you. I was surprised they didn't do that today because that's like the original social distance meet and greet. Mm -hmm, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Mark McConville was uh, not working today. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it honestly hits the spot really nicely. I, It's soft, it's chewy, it's not too firm. It strikes that really nice balance. It'd be interesting to see how this tastes with like a beer cheese or something like that, just dip in. But. Yeah, I don't remember what sauce they offered me but it was one that I like didn't trust to No, of course, yeah. Good. But this would be really good with like a nice spicy mustard, I think. Do we have any spicy mustard? I'll go check. Do, 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 it looks do. like we do. Just he's get it off my pants. So this is uh, Target brand Market Pantry spicy mustard. I'm trying to like do it all with the cardboard so we can like dip it. Sexy. <laughs> Finally, this video has a sound grosser than our own chewing. <laughs> Bottoms up. Yeah. Solid combo. But this is one of those, you know, great big soft pretzels that would be equally at home with a savory dip and a sweet dip. Oh, totally, yeah. Like if you had like some sort of cinnamon frosting or something. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Or some sort of like. Cinnabon-ish sort of like mm -hmm. that white donkey sauce. If you just get like a thing of Dunkaroos and don't use the graham cracker at all, yeah. just dunk this in there. So you get one thing of Dunkaroos and then you get one thing of the donkey sauce and you dip them both in there, <laughs> it's just perfection. I should probably talk about the actual experience of being at Universal Studios today. Yeah, I was not able to join Dave because um, I quit the mattress game and um, have started a new job at a cool little tech company. And you are working home you are working from home, but you're still working nine to five hours. Yeah. And also you don't have a universal pass because you don't like universal as much as I do. It's not a park that is designed for me, both physically, but also like sensorily wise. It is kind of a sensory overload park. And I was finding that uh, today where I was trying to listen to podcasts in the lines for things, but I forgot just how loud yeah. the TVs in the lines are and my new phone is great in many ways, but uh, it does not let me turn the volume up loud enough in my earbuds. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it tells me your earbuds are too loud. Like at least three times a day, it tells me your earbuds are too loud. You're gonna damage your hearing. And it's like, I can't hear anything. Yeah. So uh, either I already did damage my hearing or it's not actually as loud as you say it is. Or they want you to wait till you get the AirPods to then listen to it as loud as you want to. Yeah, we'll see if that actually makes a difference. Exactly. But so I got up bright and early, headed down to Universal Studios, was there by like 9.30 or so when the park opened at nine. Right away went to Secret Life of Pets because uh, 
I had cheated. I had watched some footage of the ride and it looked very cute. It is adorable, like the video footage I've seen of it. And I rode it in person and it was very cute. Wait, you did it three times? I did it three times today. I, I did it start of the day, middle of the day, and it was the last thing I rode at the end of the day. Um, it is definitely the ride that Universal has needed this whole time. Um, mm -hmm. A lot, like ever since ET closed, they have desperately needed this ride. Yeah. And a lot of my critiques of the 2016 era version of the park in the Blitz California are rendered a little obsolete mm -hmm. by the existence by the existence of this ride. But hey, when Blitz California comes out, it's going to be a time capsule. So what you going to do? Oh, of course, of course. The park in general. Uh, so some of you may have seen on some of the other social media uh, a few weeks ago. I did go to Six Flags mm -hmm. Magic Mountain. That was my first post pandemic or let's be real, mid-pandemic, but post-lockdown park. Yeah. And, uh... For those, for those videos, here is links to Dave's TikTok here. Yes. That is how you get to my TikTok. Link, link in description. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands right now. That's what I'm doing with my hands right now. Um, so Magic Mountain, I believe them when they say they were operating at reduced capacity... It was the most crowded I had ever seen in the park. Mm -hmm. My feeling is, of course, though, it's like, you know, everybody was like, a theme park? I don't care if it's Magic Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the time, they were the only park that was open, which is why I was there. So maybe that has tapered off since then. But as of a few weeks ago when I went, it was very crowded. Mass compliance was like maybe 80%. Mm -hmm. And, uh... There were distance markers in all the queues, but nobody was paying attention to them. People were just bunching on up. Uh, so basically I was glad that I didn't go until after my vaccine had kicked in. Yeah. Universal, on the other hand, actually felt like reduced capacity. And in the morning, basically everything was almost a walk-on. Like I did Secret Life of Pets, then I went down to the lower lot and knocked it all out in an hour. Like there was a slightly, like, there was, like, maybe a 15-minute line for Jurassic World. There was barely any line at all for Transformers. And there was maybe a 20-minute line for Mummy. And then after that, I came back to the upper lot, and then I had lunch. And then after lunch, all the lines got a lot longer. And the studio tour ended up being, like, an 80-minute line. And the studio tour was the one queue where, much like at Six Flags, people weren't paying attention to the distance markers. The studio tour was the one where, like, everybody was really bunching up on each other. Every other queue I was in today, everybody was actually taking the distance markers seriously. Mm -hmm. But uh, the studio the studio tour was the queue where, like, nobody gave a shit. And, man, yeah, what you gonna do? Yeah. The studio tour was also only 40 minutes long. They didn't skip any attractions, I don't think. They skipped uh, the metro lots and Hill Valley because they were actually doing filming today. Oh, wow. Or location scouting or something. And they skipped uh, uh, the good place slash the Europe village mm -hmm. again because of actual production. And when you don't take those detours, it makes the whole thing a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I got to see the backside of Nintendo World construction, so there's that. Yeah, it was the pictures that he said were really cool looking. And, uh, yeah, um, yeah, the tour itself was as good as ever. Like I said, all the attractions were going. They didn't do most of the, uh, pre-show, uh, for Supercharge, most of the before you get into the garage videos. Mm -hmm. But even before pandemic, it was always a crapshoot if they were gonna do those. Mm -hmm. Um, it was interesting, I, I did Minion Mayhem, and they skipped the first pre-show room. I, I think there's like limitations on how long they can have people mm -hmm. indoors mm -hmm. or how long they're trying to have people indoors. That makes sense. So they skipped the living room pre-show, but they had the um uh, the lab pre-show. So there's that. <laughs> um, and you know, they still don't have the 3D glasses in Minion Mayhem, but everything else had 3D glasses. Transformers and the tour all had their 3D mm -hmm. glasses. It's just some of those things that feel like they would be cutbacks because of the pandemic, but no, yeah. they're just cutbacks Universal was already making. Yeah. Like, like cutting the 3D out of Minion Mayhem. One thing I kind of dug about uh, Universal's procedures during this pandemic is not only do they have cast members, you know, wiping down mm -hmm. uh, surfaces with disinfectant and stuff, 
But any ride where you have to pull on the lap bar yourself, mm -hmm. before you got on the ride, there was someone with a big bottle of hand sanitizer to just spray it in your hand. <laughs> and and not like a hand sanitizer. L like it looked like a Windex bottle, but it was but it was hand sanitizer, and they just got this huge thing of hand sanitizer just to spray in everyone's hands before we uh, touched the thing. And I, I genuinely appreciated that I, move. That is rad. I I yes yeah, yes. I, I I thought that was like snatch for you, Glen Coco. That is fantastic. L like in its own dystopian way, I thought that made it fun. Yeah, it's very Stanley Spadowski. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, it weirdly added a personal touch to, to the, uh, like, the fact that it was actually a team member. It wasn't just like, here, we're trusting you to do yourself. The fact that there was a team member, and, and yeah, real talk, I'm sure it was because they didn't trust us. Even though, again, mass compliance was a lot better mm -hmm. here than it was at uh, Six Flags. I, I think I saw, like, one person without a mask where they should have had one on. Mm. Everyone else was waiting for tables and everything. So it's something else for the team members to do. I am I am guessing Charlie probably uh, <laughs> will be on handspray duty at some point when while he's working Transformers. I, I, I bet you he will, and he will still be thanked for his service, and he will still be <laughs> mad about it too. <laughs> Charlie, if you're watching, you can leave in the comments whether or not that is a thing you've already done. <laughs> No stage shows, I don't think. I, I, I know they weren't doing Waterworld, and I think they weren't doing the special effects show because uh, when I walked past the special effects stages, uh, the whole entry area outside the Castle Theater was uh, overflow table seating. Oh, that makes sense, that makes sense. For dining. And also the um, uh, around the, the Hogsmeade stage where they do the Triwizard show that was also all tables around there so i think they're not doing any live entertainment which mm. makes sense but i don't know it, it 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 just seems like in a time where disney is using all their live entertainment stages to do like socially distant character meet and greets mm -hmm. it seems like they could have done something more with the triwizard stage than just have it be uh surrounded by tables but they also don't really have meetable characters and oh wait i did see one other meetable character and that was the uh hogwarts express conductor was there wearing a mask and sort of like behind a rope standing next to the train uh... um and there might have been a minion behind a rope at one point uh i mean that makes sense yeah all in all it was a much more pleasant uh day at the park than the magic mountain day was mm -hmm. um and you know partly just because Universal is a more pleasant park than Magic Mountain. Yeah, yeah. Even, even as you personally don't find Universal that pleasant. I find City Walk more interesting than Universal itself as well. But also City Walk only when it's dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> only, only when it's not crowded and noisy. Though, you know, like, hot tip, uh, Zen Zone is actually not terrible to go spend a little bit of money to, especially if you've had a long one at the park. Yes, you've done Zen Zone. I have not. I, I highly recommend if... Uh, you have shown your feet who is boss uh, to go into one of the tubes and then get your feet worked on by the water jets. I'm not sure if they're doing Zen Zone right now. But... I wouldn't be surprised. It seems like a harder one to to do stuff with. Yeah, but I also they did might a, be. Because I also did a, an oxygen facial facial with them as well, which basically means they put uh, like one of those like cantalunas or whatever like around your nose, and they like inject oxygen into your face through like you know this this, this like intense oxygen through your nose, but like it smells really nice. So I had like a Christmas tree smell, like as I was getting like the massage happening as well. That I don't recommend the face stuff because at the same time it's kind of weird, but like massage, A plus. And it's not that expensive either. Who knows when it'll be open again, but if it is, do it. I can probably look up if it's open again. True. Uh, <laughs> um, I And I just wasn't paying attention when I walked past it. Well, it's also such a, a nothing location. Like it's easy yeah. to like walk past and just be like, oh, was that there? The lines got longer as the day went on, but uh, if you get there, you know, if you got your reservation and you get there early in the morning, you can knock out a lot of the things that make the park fun mm -hmm. pretty early. And yeah, again, I rode pets three times. It, it was it was mm -hmm. worth it. Uh, honestly, a lot of the queue lengths, a, a lot of the line lengths were kind of fluctuating over the course of the day. 
where it's like it's like oh now this is 50 minutes oh now it's 20 minutes oh now it's and, and yeah, yeah. bouncing all over the place so you know the studio tour just got longer and longer as it went on but uh in general i had a pleasant day now today is wednesday so it might not be so great on a weekend yeah, if you can go, I would assume midweek is probably like a, an optimum optimal time to do so. Like a yes, but I, but I don't know if at at reduced capacity it'll still be pleasant on a weekend. Partly because I presume even peak capacity for Universal is smaller than peak capacity no, for, sure. for Six Flags, just because there's so much less space at Universal. Yeah. So I would imagine that reduced capacity for Universal is still is is going to be smaller but i don't know if we really maxed out reduced capacity today mm -hmm. the way it definitely felt like we maxed out the reduced capacity on my six flags day yeah the fact that they actually had you know pathways like like in the pathways a divider and it's like you know traffic going this way stay on the right traffic you know stay on the right that made Springfield so much easier to walk through than it normally is, because Springfield is always kind of a bottleneck there, mm -hmm. because as, as you're getting to the end, either to get to the lower lot or the studio tour, and it's just, you know, lined with people cramming into restaurants and everything. So the fact that there was actual guided traffic flow in Springfield, yeah. and again, fewer people than usual. If you still have your Universal Studios annual pass, it is worth getting a reservation to go, I, I think. it's uh, It was nice to be back. I'll take his word for it. And uh, when you go, get the big fucking pretzel. It's so, yeah, highly, highly. I may go just to pick up another one of these fresh. Just, just to have one fresh? Yeah. I could definitely not eat this by myself in the park without, like, like if, if, Maybe it, it's a day that you know you're like gonna speed a little bit. I'll go hang out in like a city walk and just you know communicate with Zen Zone, and then we we split this at the end. There we go. We'll figure it out. Anyway, that's my Universal Pretzel report and his T-shirt report. Yes, and and my Universal T-shirt report. Mm -hmm. And now I can write both the T-shirt and the pretzel off because I reviewed them. This is wardrobe now. <laughs> Once I create uh, the Universal hipster character, this will be. Uh, this will be his shirt. When I get new glasses, you'll just pop the lens out of these and use these to help with that look. Go to Patreon and listen to our podcast. <laughs> and uh, watch uh, Unfaithfully Yours. We believe to talk about it more recently because I believe Re the Sesame Street episode just came out. But, Sesame uh, Street episode. As we're recording this Sesame Street episode, the first of two Sesame Street episodes yeah. came out yesterday. Last week, we talked about the Preston Sturges classic Unfaithfully Yours mm -hmm. starring Rex Harrison. Actually... If you can find it, go watch the Sesame Street classic, Don't Eat the Pictures, because... Yes, th this came up on the podcast <laughs> uh, on yesterday's episode, and, and uh, yesterday's episode was The Things We Kind of Remember, which is the sub-series of At Home with the Doggins is, where we do not do any further research on things we remember from our childhood. Since we recorded that... Allie has done further research on this thing she remembered from her childhood. I purposely waited until after the episode dropped to do so because I still wanted to keep it, like, kind of pure. And uh, it, it's even wilder than you remember. Yeah, yeah. We don't even mention in the podcast that James Mason is involved. He plays an, Adip an Egyptian demon. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. So he's played Lucille Ball's guardian angel, <laughs> and he's played an Egyptian demon. The man's got range, what can you say? <laughs> James Mason's got range. James the God Mason. And he's played a creep many times over. But who hasn't? Which do you think he's creepier in, Lolita or Georgie Girl? Yes. <laughs> I actually think this movie, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's creepiest in the Sesame Street movie. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I didn't have time to get a scripted video ready for this month, so uh, here's a non-scripted one. There you go. Nam's ahoy, yo. Do you have anything else to say? Um, if you're looking for something fun to listen to, just listen to us. <laughs> Solid point. Anyway, this has been us. Yeah. I, by reflex, I want to say this has been at home with the dog and this, but no, it yeah. hasn't. You have to pay for that. Exactly. So we will not say later days. It's a video, so we say this is Dave and Allie signing off. Yeah, we'll be back with the next weird food thing at some point in the future. Future, future. Maybe. 
this wasn't that weird of food. It's no, it's, no, it's it just that big, universal it was just has big it. food. Yeah. As opposed to weird food. I mean, I guess good food at Universal is still kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> hey, boy, can dream right. Bye.